This is Bishop Michael Burbage, and you are listening to the Walk Humbly Podcast. Welcome to the Walk Humbly Podcast. I'm Billy Atwell, Chief Communications Officer for the Diocese and your co-host. If you're listening to this podcast, then you are benefiting from the generosity of thousands and thousands of people throughout the diocese who have contributed to the Bishop's Lenten Appeal. The BLA, as we call it, supports a lot of ministries in this diocese, one of which includes the Communications Office here at the Chancery. So we want to say thank you to all those who made it possible this, this past year. And if you haven't yet, please make sure you rate this podcast and write a review on iTunes. Spotify, Stitch, or Overcast. If you're listening on YouTube, please subscribe and ring the bell. A lot of people decide what they listen to or view by the reviews there. So please uh, go and offer that up. Um, you can sign up for our e-newsletter at arlingtondiocese.org. A lot of times that's the head of the spear for major news that we're releasing is that um, that e-newsletter, the other obviously being this podcast. You can follow Bishop Burbage on Twitter, at Bishop Burbage, where every day you can read a short reflection on the gospel of that day. Make sure you're following the diocese on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And if you have a question for Bishop Burbage, email us at info at arlingtondiocese.org or call us at 703-831-7013. That uh, inbox has been a little light lately, so if you have questions, please send them again. It's info at arlingtondiocese.org. I welcome your host, Bishop Burbage. Bishop, how are you doing? Billy, I'm doing well. Thank you. had a wonderful weekend in some beautiful parts of our diocese yeah. and uh, confirmation and uh, celebrated uh, Mass for Curcio, uh, members of our Hispanic community celebrating their 40th anniversary. Uh, beautiful Mass yesterday for persons with disabilities mm. and so inspired to see so many uh, people there who just in so many ways shows us show us the, the face of God and, and all those uh, who support and help them. And, uh, and last night, realized I'm not as young as I used to be. It was a <laughs> campus ministry program at George Mason, and Mass was over at 10 p.m. Uh, <laughs> when we would begin the reception at that time. <laughs> so I was thinking, okay, this is my body clock's a little different here, but I had a blast, as I always do when I'm with our young people. You mentioned uh, our bishop's uh, annual appeal, and yeah. our campus ministry is supported by that. And I have to say, the campus ministry programs we have throughout our diocese are just tremendous, uh, really so present uh, to our young people, uh, leading them closer to Christ, forming them to be leaders within our church. So it's always uh, very, very inspiring and uh, energetic. Very good. Well, hopefully you had an extra cup of coffee this morning. I did, I did. Because we got a lot of big topics to talk about. So this uh, week's a pretty important one. You've been a bishop here uh, in this diocese for five years, uh, but you've got an important announcement for us. Yes, Billy, this is my fifth uh, anniversary as Bishop Arlington. Uh, I cannot believe it's uh, five years already. And uh, believe me, I thank God every day. Uh, that he has sent me to this beautiful diocese, vibrant diocese, uh, with such great priests and faithful and religious, and I, I could not be happier. And uh, and it's a growing, vibrant diocese. Mm-hmm. So uh, so what we have to to work on is the the famous strategic plan for our diocese. All right. and I know some people when they hear strategic plan, uh, it sometimes becomes this big binder that sits on a on a, a shelf. But that's not our strategic plan. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is uh, going to be a playbook. It's going to uh, be a working document uh, that guides us for the next uh, five years throughout our diocese. Uh, We have many, many blessings, uh, but we also have uh, many spiritual and pastoral needs. And so so to address them, I commissioned a diocesan strategic plan with common goals for the next five years. And my hope that it is this plan that will unite us in our prayer and our work together. And it came it came from the diocese, from the faithful in the diocese. It's not it's not a chancery or a Bishop Burbage plan. You mm-hmm. know, it, it was the product of broad consultation with priests, religious, and laity over the last year. We held 26 focus groups and conducted three surveys and met with all the priests to review it. Uh, we received the input of hundreds and hundreds of parishioners uh, throughout our diocese, and and we heard about those blessings and challenges as as our faith are striving to to grow uh, close to Christ. And so it was that input uh, led by our chief operations officer, Ward Jones, and uh, who I'm, to whom I'm so grateful, has a form, this plan informs us where we need to direct our prayers and our resources and our efforts. Because there's so many 
great opportunities ahead of us, so many great things to do, but we just can't do them all. Right. So that's what a strategic plan helps you to do. Yeah. Um, and so to fulfill this mission, we're united in the goal. So here are the goals that uh, I'll be announcing in a video today and a letter mm -hmm. to the faithful. But after lots of consultation and prayer, uh, we came up with these six major goals to revitalize evangelization and faith formation, to cultivate authentic discipleship in Christ, to invigorate Catholic education for all, to strengthen parish and family life, to foster one communion of many cultures, and to deepen our commitment uh, to charitable works. So we will, uh, to achieve our goals, first of all, we need God's grace. We need lots of prayers. We need time, commitment, unity. Uh, and, and together, I think we can do uh, great things. So uh, asking all our listeners and faithful in diocese to keep your ears and eyes open and uh, to help me move this plan forward. And I want to read the mission of it, because I think this really this strikes at the heart of your pastoral ministry, but obviously this is something that everybody can, can jump on board with. In communion with the universal church, we strive to be disciples of Jesus Christ by proclaiming the kingdom of God in both word and sacrament throughout our diocese, and by working together in service of charity and mercy so that all may know the joy of the gospel. And that joy of the gospel has been really a hallmark of your ministry, you know, the, the, the joy that we should have if we're truly living the faith. There will certainly be challenges, but we face them joyfully. I think especially in our, our chosen time now that we've been asked to, to serve Christ and his church, that joy is needed more than ever. Absolutely, and a joy and a sense of confidence, uh, only though if we let God lead us right. and be right. open to his Holy Spirit, that he may be leading us in new ways, you know, mm -hmm. uh, ways that we, we did not imagine. So there is joy, uh, but again, led by God, enlightened by the Spirit. And there's information on the strategic plan. You can break it down a little bit more and see some of the particulars at arlingtondiocese.org slash strategy. We didn't get too inventive there with the URL. We wanted to keep it real simple. So <laughs> arlingtondiocese.org slash strategy. Uh, Your Excellency, uh, recently Pope Francis announced a synod of bishops titled For a Synodal Church, Communion, Participation, and Mission. Uh, before we get into kind of the, the basics of what a, a, a synod is intended to do, explain what a synod is. Yeah, a synod uh, of bishops uh, is, a, is a process. It's a gathering by which bishops throughout the world, and it's not uncommon. All of our Holy Fathers have done this through, in recent history. Uh, throughout the world offer counsel and perspective to the Holy Father uh, regarding pastoral matters, uh, you know, in our own diocese mm. and within our church. A synod actually comes from a, a, a Greek word, uh, which means common road. Mm. It's much like our strategic plan. That's right. Common That's road. Right, yeah. So uh, it begins with a preparatory document that offers a blueprint of what the uh, particular synod will cover. Uh, it can cover whatever issues the Holy Father wants to explore. And we received this document uh, in preparation for the Senate in early September. I began reviewing it uh, with my staff. Uh, the process concludes with an ordinary general assembly of the Synod of Bishops in October 2023. So mm. the bishops of the United States will unite bishops to represent us in that general uh, assembly. And I'm working now to convene a working group. I've asked Father Don Planty, uh, the pastor of St. Charles Barmeo, oh, to be our coordinator of this group, job. who will put, you know, who will help us to implement focus groups and surveys of the faithful, which I will uh, coordinate through our pastors. Uh, with more than half a million Catholics in our diocese, Billy, most will not be able maybe to direct, uh, participate directly. But my hope is that the, by gathering a diverse group of Catholics, I'll receive counsel and feedback from a wide representative body. Mm. We're ahead of the game because we just, as I said, just uh, uh, did all these listening sessions yeah, and, and surveys. Focus groups, but there's right. some different things that our Holy Father wants us to do, including trying to find ways, and you know, this might be a little bit challenging, but trying to find ways uh, to reach out to good people who maybe for one reason or another have wandered away from the church and are mm -hmm. not active, you know, is so to hear from them, well, what, what's causing that separation and where can a church accompany you and help you mm -hmm. uh, along this common road together, this, this yeah. common path? Uh, so we're a little bit ahead of the game. Uh, and and it, 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 after doing all this work, I would have to write a 10-page report okay. uh, sent out to the Holy Father uh, based on this local needs in this, in this diocese. It's, it's kind of coincidental, I guess, for us that having conflict uh, pleaded a strategic planning process where there's consultation and we're listening and trying to respond to the needs. The Holy Father's doing the same with the Synod of Bishops. You know, it's just kind it, of funny timing for us. It, exactly right. And you know, and, and that, that whole thing of 
all the you know consultation and collaboration and like a synodal process actually it takes place in our diocese all the time right yeah you know i i consult with our deans and with our finance council uh we, our pastors have pastoral councils we meet uh as a uh, with as an executive staff a joint administrative body Whenever I'm out into the parishes, I'm there to listen. So it, it, the Holy Father is just emphasizing it and, and just trying to join our efforts together. Yeah, it's like a spirit of listening. Yeah. That's great. Very good. Um, Bishop, uh, early voting has begun in Virginia for state and, and local offices. Um, one issue that many of us did not expect to be so clearly in the forefront this year is abortion. Sometimes it seems to be taking a backseat to other issues from time to time. And at the national level, there's a context for this. The Texas abortion law is expected to go to the Supreme, U.S. Supreme Court and Congress. Um, the House just passed the so-called Women's Health Protection Act. It's, it's uh, unlikely to pass the Senate, but it's devastating that it was actually passed in the House. Um, you know, it's one that you and Bishop Nestout have been outspoken about and issued, you know, statements about it. And the Virginia Catholic Conference has been sounding the alarm. Um, you know, while these issues are, you know, at the national level, level, you know, um, we have candidates for governor here, and they're discussing the issue of abortion and talking about how abortion is on the ballot in Virginia. Um, what are your thoughts on, on how the issue of abortion ha- has been a focal point in a unique way in this, this run, uh, both for our own governor's race, but, you know, for national conversations as well? Yeah, well, of course, uh, the fact that we're even having to discuss and debate this issue um, is very sad. Uh, we have the gospel of life. It's very clear that, uh, you know, in our in our teaching, uh, as we follow the path that Jesus gave to us, he gave us a gospel of life. He reminded us constantly that God created us uh, in his own image and likeness, that his Holy Spirit lives and dwells within us in all of life, uh, from conception to, to natural death, at every stage is to be revered, um, is to be cherished, is to be treasured, um, and is to be protected. Um, so, I mean, to me, th- that, is, that is just so clear. It's, it's, it, the gift of life is the most precious gift that God gives to us along with our faith. And uh, the fact that we're having to discuss that within the womb of a mother is a child. And not only are we discussing the legalized abortion that so sadly exists in our station, na- now uh, candidates are talking about more aggressive means, as it we is. saw in that act that you just talked about. Uh, you know, to make it uh, even more harmful, uh, and to to kill more children, and, and, and to make us it. and make us pay for exactly. it. Exactly, you know, exactly. make us pay for it, uh, which is absolutely uh, ridiculous. Uh, so I, I do think, especially as we begin October, Respect Life Month, I think we have to be always vigilant. Uh, that is, this the, you know, if we don't get this right in the beginning, get life right at the beginning then it's, it's, we should expect that everything else is, is going to crumble. Um, and uh, Bishop Nestout and I, uh, again, we, when we issue these statements, and um, it, we do it in a, in, a, in, a, uh, in a confident and joyful way because we're pro-life. Yeah. It's about life. Uh, it's about celebrating life, and it's about reminding people that the church is always there. Uh, you know, to accompany anyone in a difficult situation yeah. or a challenging pregnancy, uh, to, to be there, to walk with you, to uh, support you, you know, financially, to provide for your child. Um, even, you know, sadly, when uh, mother and father choose abortion, to be there afterwards, you know, because healing will definitely be necessary. That's right. But th- this is like, this is about life. We're something we're, we, we celebrate. And when you hear uh, candidates who, you know, say the, exactly the opposite, boy, that better raise our, uh, our, our attention. And uh, because we have to be defenders of life. And one of the ways we defend life is to elect officials uh, who are going to chart the course to protect life. How critical is that issue when people are considering all the, the issues that are going into an election? You know, abortion is not the only issue. There's other issues that are talked about. How, how much of priority should people place on abortion at the ballot box? Well, again, we have to get life right from the beginning. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it, it, it is what we always say the, the, the most prominent uh, topic uh, or, or moral uh, issue that we're facing uh, because of the impact. It's ha- every single day. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, unborn children are, are, are being uh, killed. Yeah. Uh, so because of the gravity of, of not the act itself, but the, the sure number of, of uh, how this is happening, how can that not be uh, something that gets our primary attention? I thought of in, in terms of context this weekend, 
Um, I studied the Rwandan genocide in college, and every year in this country, we abort as many children as the Rwandan genocide killed. Mm-hmm. And imagine if every year a genocide like that was happening in our country, year after year after year since the 70s. How would people not be out in the streets and speaking up? Like, how would that not be the most important issue right. at the ballot box? Right. You know, it's it's really unbelievable. So I, you know, I always encourage our faithful. Please, uh, you, we, as citizens, we have the sacred duty to vote, um, but we have to be faithful citizens. That's right. And we we cannot separate our faith from our vote. Uh, Absolutely, it just cannot happen. Yeah. And that's uh, made easier by the Virginia Catholic Conference. Um, they, they make it easy for you to do your homework. You don't have to go and dig through every you know, candidate's website. They've done a lot of this for you. Um, so in early October, the Virginia Catholic Conference is going to be putting out a side-by-side chart showing the position of the statewide candidates for governor, lieutenant governor, and attorney general on uh, major issues. Uh, they also have a chart on the website that shows you how your state senators and delegates voted in the 2021 General Assembly. That's very important to see how they perform, not just what they say, but how do they actually vote? Um, so to check those out, go to vacatholic.org. Um, it's really imperative. Again, the Virginia Catholic Conference makes this really easy for you to see what's going on there. And Billy, and that's important too, that when we provide this as a resource, um, we're just using the words of the candidates. Uh, it's, right. not, it's not our interpretation. Uh, it's direct right. quotes from what the candidate has said or has posted on uh, uh, the, the candidate's website. Yeah, yeah, we, we pull right from their own, their own language. Um, it, it, it feels like an eternity since the diocesan pilgrimage. I think the pilgrimage of four years ago was my first week on the job. Because I met a lot of my coworkers actually at the pilgrimage. I think, boy, how long has it been since we've had one of those? But I think you have some good news for us. Yeah, so we are having our diocesan pilgrimage to uh, the Basilica Shrine in Washington, D.C., uh, which is always uh, such a joyful, uh, inspiring, spiritually enriching experience on October uh, the 30th, mm-hmm. um, Saturday. Um, I know. I know, I hope uh, all of our parishioners are informed of that uh, through their parish bulletin and certainly through uh, our diocesan uh, social media, and including our website. Uh, the theme for this year's pilgrimage is St. Joseph, because we're in the year of St. Joseph, mm-hmm. uh, the guardian of the body of Christ. As we prayerfully gather as one diocesan family uh, with the shrine devoted to his wife and, and our mother. And so we try to make it a family event. Uh, we, there's something for everyone, even a seek and find for, for children. And yeah. we have them going through the whole basilica, which is a pretty large facility. Uh, and they have, um, you know, fun, you know, trying to find the shrines and different places like that. Uh, so it's really going to be a great event. And, you know, Billy, even though it's just a day and it's not too far, uh, a pilgrimage is a great reminder right? That Mm -hmm. uh, where we're going. It's a reminder, you know, where you are on a pilgrimage here on earth. It's our journey and it's our goal to get to heaven. So that's what a pilgrimage reminds us of. And we we travel in the company of one another to help each other get to heaven uh, with always the protection of our blessed mother and the graces of her son. So this this brings that all home. uh, And it reminds us that we are a family, a diocesan family, uh, united as brothers and sisters. And one of the most beautiful parts about it is how many strollers you see going around. I Families know. with yeah, the little kids really and is. keeping them engaged the whole yeah. time. And, and frankly, our diocese does a great job at making it very family friendly. So speaking on that, I want to just address some of the details related to the pilgrimage. Box lunch options will be available at the shrine for about $10 each, um, but pilgrims are encouraged to bring their own bag lunch as well because there's a limit on how many can be sold. Um, the shrine is wheelchair accessible for anyone who needs it. There will also be a sign interpreting for ASL um, for the deaf. Uh, For more information about the shrine and its accessibility and all those kinds of things, go to their website. It's nationalshrine.org. Currently, the National Shrine of the Immaculate Conception in D.C. does require masks for all all visitors, so everyone inside will need to wear a mask. Um, You can can check up on on those updates as we get closer to the event. You can see the full schedule of events, the different liturgies. It's a great day with a lot of stuff going on. Go to arlingtondiocese.org. We don't make it hard to find, I promise you that. A couple plugs real quick. The Spanish language lay Catholic spirituality movement called Curcio, which Bishop Burbage mentioned at the top of the podcast, celebrates 40 years in our diocese. The Herald's put together a story on that. Go to catholicherald.com to check out that story. Um, Bishop Burbage is publishing a column in uh, an upcoming edition of the Herald titled, titled Called to be Defenders of Life. You don't want to miss that. Um, that will be 
um, on that Catholic Herald website. Again, again, that's catholicherald.com. Sign up for the Herald's e-newsletter. It's a great way to get these stories sent directly to your inbox at catholicherald.com. Uh, Bishop, before we get to your final thoughts, quick quick question. Eagles and Dallas this weekend. Tonight. The Cowboys. Oh, it's tonight. tonight. Sorry, yes. sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah, tonight. It's tonight. So <laughs> You were ready. <laughs> just, just what I need, another late night. <laughs> what are your predictions for that one? Well, you know, I'm a diehard optimist with the uh, Eagles okay. fan, but I think it's going to be a tough game for the Eagles. Is it? It's, okay. Uh, What's making it tough? It's Dallas's, uh, I think it's Dallas's first game at home oh, okay. after all these years. So they're, um, they're on the road. And uh, it's. I think it's going to be a great game, but um, – yeah, I'm, I'm usually the optimist, but not, right. not feeling it this morning. <laughs> Maybe later today I'll feel a little bit better about that. Very good. And any final thoughts before you, and then if you would send us off with your blessing. Yeah, just uh, I'm really excited this week. Um, I'll be uh, at my alma mater, St. Charles Barromeo Seminary, uh, where many of our priests uh, have graduated and did priestly formation, celebrating uh, a hun- the 150th anniversary of the seminary. Wow. Isn't that incredible? Wow, that is incredible. Yeah, and uh, I had the great honor uh, to uh, be the homeless for the Mass, but uh, I have to tell you, this this is a pressure one, you know, because the congregation is only bishops, priests, and seminaries. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of theologians uh, and philosophers. A lot of, lot of people <laughs> listening to that one. you so. got to break out your A game yeah, for that one. People say a little prayer there. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, I would just like to also just say, um, I, you know, tomorrow I'll finish, the, you know, the visits I do to our Catholic campus ministry programs and our diocesan high schools and uh, and some of our great schools I have been visiting. And uh, I just want to, again, uh, just express, the, well, first of all, words of thanks to our parents uh, who make so many sacrifices, especially in this day and age, uh, with adjusting their schedules and everything like that, to allow their children to attend our Catholic schools where five days a week, uh, our students learn about their faith. They're able to pray. They're able to go to Mass. It's, it's just wonderful. But our Catholic educators, just like last year, are heroic really uh, in the work. midst of these many challenges. I know the pressure that they're under, but they are just doing such a tremendous job. And the thing is, our students are together, and they're happy. And, and our families understand that uh, we want to continue to partner with their parents in their faith formation, provide excellence in education, and, and that priority, which we will always keep at the, a high, the highest priority of keeping them safe and healthy. Absolutely. And our schools are doing a great job, but just a word of thanks to all of our Catholic educators. Perfect. And if you'd send us off with your blessing. Sure. And we just ask uh, God's blessings upon all of us and upon our diocese, especially as we embark on this strategic plan uh, and prepare for our pilgrimage, that we're always reminded, Lord, it's you who lead and we who follow. May your Holy Spirit inspire us, purify us, strengthen us, and sanctify us so that together we may walk humbly with our God. Thank you for listening to the Walk Humbly podcast. Make sure you check out more episodes on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, and Spotify. You can follow me on Twitter at Bishop Burbage where I offer gospel reflections each morning and share photos and updates of what is going on in the Diocese of Arlington. Stay up to date with news, event information, and inspirational content by subscribing to our e-newsletter at arlingtondiocese.org.